Hey there, brilliant ACCA financial management students. I'm Steve Willis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass your upcoming ACCA exam. We're going to look at the tricky topic that is regularly examined, that is net present value. I'm going to show you everything you need to know in section C in the spreadsheet. We're going to look at past exam question darn. I'll take you through every working from the basics from the spreadsheet functions through uh, inflation, through tax, through tax allowable depreciation. And we'll look at the difference between the real and the nominal after tax cost of capital. So let's get started. I've got question darn on the screen here. This is from the December 2013 exam. Download this question right now before we go any further so you can have the same document that I have on the screen here. In our first example, we'll just cover the basics and the only information I'll need is this. These operating cash flows. I want this initial investment at the beginning of year one and I want this discount rate of 12 percent ignore everything else we'll come back to that now guys on my screen I've got the ACCA practice platform open I have a blank spreadsheet so once again pause the video go into the education hub find the practice platform find a blank spreadsheet, then continue watching the video. So the first thing we always do in a constructed response spreadsheet type of question is set up a template. Okay. You got to know where you're going. Okay. Before you start working and for an NPV a net present value question, we can use a standard layout. Okay. I'm going to set up my years as column headings. I'm going to start with zero to show the beginning of year one. And we've got four years in our project. So that's the end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, end of year four. Okay. Let me show the marking team that I'm working in some countries dollars and I'm going to round off to the thousand. So I'll just use this apostrophe here. I'll put a dollar sign and then three zeros. That apostrophe sign blocks it from converting into a number. That'll keep it as text. There wouldn't be a mark for that, but let's be professional. Let's be helpful to the markers. Let's be organized and neat. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, we're only going to do the raw basics here. So I'm going to put a row now for the three cash flow lines. Okay that I mentioned we'd use. We've got a line for sales. We've got a line for costs. Let's add a line now for the initial investment. Let's double click on this column separator to auto enlarge that. Okay. And there we have the basics with the addition of a net cash flow row. CF is the abbreviation for cash flow. Now remember there are no marks for formatting. Okay. So just be neat and be quick, but skip all of the bold, the red, the colors. You don't need it. Just be organized and neat. So the marking team can follow what you're doing. Now we're ignoring inflation. So I'm just going to plug the numbers that I found in the story into my spreadsheet. We've got a 12, 500 two, five, seven, zero. 6890 We've got the costs. I'll show those as negative. So those are my operating costs. Now we have an initial investment of $2 million. That's at the beginning of year one. So I park that in year zero. That's a negative zero. So there we have our negative 2 million. Now, if they mentioned there was a residual value at the end of the project, we'd park that here. Imagine they said we'll get 50,000 at the end of the project. We'd put that there. 
but I'm taking that out. We don't have that. Okay, now, cash flow line. Let me use the sum function here, equals sum, open bracket, grab the three rows right above, close out that bracket, drag this across, and we have now completed our cash flow line. Okay, now, I know you've practiced this using the discount factor table. I know you probably did that on your course, but now in the computer-based exams, we can use the spreadsheet functions and save a lot of time. So I'm going to use a standard three-line approach to calculate net present value. Look at this. I'm going to come here and I'm going to write present value PV of the cash flows year one, two, four. Okay, the marketing team is going to know what that's all about. We're going to come over here into the, to the B column. I'm going to use the NPV function. So I'm going to rope equal sign, NPV. There are two arguments. The first one is that discount rate of 12%. So we put a 0 0.12 comma. And I'm only grabbing years 1 to 4. Okay, now at this point, we cannot read. Now there are no marks for formatting, as I said, but we do need to be able to read our work, okay? So at this point, let's grab the whole spreadsheet right there. Well, let's not do that. That takes a lot of time for the computer. I'll just grab the part that I have here, and I'm gonna put this to thousands, no decimal places, okay. right? So now it's nice and neat, now it's nice and readable. And from that present value of years one to four, we've got to subtract the year zero costs, right? And we can just use the equal sign and grab the result in B7, hit return, come down here to cell 11, that would be the NPV. And we use the equal sign, sum function, grab the two items above. I should have done my formatting, run my formatting a little lower. Never mind. Okay. So there we have a solution. In your ACCA exam, there is always a mark then for interpreting the NPV. So make sure you give the marking team a couple of sentences. Okay. NPV is positive. This means it will increase owner wealth, so we should accept it. Don't worry about your English. The model solutions that you see are written in a very lofty, academic, wordy style. Write simple, write concisely. There are no marks for spelling or grammar, so just make your point, move on. You'll get the mark for interpretation of the figure. Guys, that is the basic CBE approach to NPV. Let's move on now and deal with inflation. Okay, I'm back at the question. Let's now use more of the information, okay? And they tell us that these cash flows are before taking account of a general inflation rate. So, when we consider inflation, we now need to find that discount rate again, which is 12%. This is a nominal or money after tax cost of capital. Well, what does that mean? It simply means that if we have inflated cash flows, we want to inflate the cost of capital. Okay, so if the question mentions inflation rates in the operating cash flows, okay, and we're going to inflate those cash flows, then we use the nominal cost of capital. If we're going to ignore the impact of inflation, then we will use the real cost of capital. Let's go back to our spreadsheet and I will demonstrate all of this, okay? so. Let me make a note. 
basic example. Let's go down and now let's include inflation. I'm going to copy and paste this whole spreadsheet down here. Okay, the first thing that I'll do is make space for the inflated sales and costs. So I'm going to grab these two lines. I'm going to do a control X and a control V for paste. Okay, now I am going to just make a row inflated sales at 4.7% and inflated costs at 4.7%. Double click on that column separator, auto enlarge that column there, okay? And I'm simply going to grab the sales line in cell C19, I'll do the equal sign and I will refer in my formula to cell C17, uninflated sales. I'll multiply by 1.047 to show inflation. That's inflation in year one. However, in the later years, we've got to consider compounding, okay? Because the inflation will be growing year on year. Year two needs the effect of inflation in year one and year two. So I will now use a nice spreadsheet trick. I open up, I use a caret to show to the power of, and I can grab the year in row 16. And I'll put a dollar sign in front of that 16. That locks this expression into an absolute row of 16, but relative column of C. So Look at this, this is nice. I can just drag it down one. Let me make sure I grab that box, drag it down one, and then I can drag it over, saving a lot of time. Those are the figures I'm looking for. So now I've got compounded inflation for my costs and my sales. Next thing to do is to fix my cash flow line. Yes, the CBE spreadsheet tool is really cool, but it's not as slick as Excel in some ways. For example, if I insert rows or copy paste a function, sometimes I've got to reset my formula. So I don't want sales and costs, I want inflated. So I've got to move this box down, All right? Just re fixing my formula so it includes inflated sales, inflated costs, initial investment, hit return, drag that over, and now we have a net cash flow line including the effects of compounding inflation. Let's now look at inflation and the discount rate. So remember this, the real rate multiplied by the general inflation rate will give us the nominal discount rate, okay? Because we are using inflated cash flows, we need to use the nominal discount rate. And if we go back to our question for a second, they were nice to us here. They gave us the nominal or money after tax cost of capital. That's what we want when we're using inflated cash flows. They also told us the general inflation of one point uh, of 4.7. So just uh, for fun, let's go back to our spreadsheet. And if we know the nominal, we can add a one in front of it, 1.012. 1.012, 12%, general inflation with a 1, 1 1.047. We can now work backwards and get the real cost of capital. That's the cost of capital excluding the effects of inflation. So that would simply be 
the nominal divided by the general. And there we have it, 6.9. rounded to seven by the spreadsheet, okay? So that's the difference between the real and the nominal discount rate. Let's get rid of that. We didn't need to do that. That was just for fun. Let's get the NPV. So good practice to do this again. So we need to get the present value of the cash flows years one to four. Let's go in cell B. Let's open up that NPV function again. Open up the bracket. 12% discount rate, so we show that in decimal form. Use a comma, grab only years one to four. There we have present value of those cash flows. Now we need year zero cash flow. Let's come back here, equals cash flow, year zero, NPV equal to the sum of these. It will be positive again. And let's format that so everyone can read it. We can read it. The marking team can read it. Okay. There we have it. And don't forget the easy mark, okay, for interpreting the figure. Therefore, we should accept the project on financial grounds because it will increase the wealth of the shareholders. Okay, team, that's how you deal with inflation. Let's now move on to tax. To look at tax, let's copy this down again. I'm going to grab all of this, copy it down to 28, make some space. Let's rename that, dealing with tax. Okay, so at this point, let me rearrange things. Let me delete some of this information. We'll just retype it again when we need it. At this point, we have our operational costs. So we need to make a taxable cash flow line, okay? Our sales minus our costs we can assume is our taxable cash flow. So I'll just rename that. Of course, the marketing team is going to understand that abbreviation. And now I'm just going to sum up the two inflated lines with the sum function. I'm going to drag that across as we always do. Great, now the story tells us that the tax rate is 30% and it's in arrears. That means the tax is paid in the year following the tax calculation. So we need to offset our tax by one, okay? And tax is 30%, so I can make a new line. And the tax for year one will be in column two. So I just use the equal sign. I grab the taxable cash flow multiplied by negative 0 0.3. That's my tax. I'll drag that over four columns. And now let me add a new year to my project, year five. Okay, so that's how we deal with tax. Next thing we need to consider is the tax allowable depreciation. The tax authorities will let us write off the asset over time. However, it will be at the at a different tax rate, okay? The depreciation that we use in our own P&L, that'll be based on the expected life of the asset, but the tax authorities will have their own rules 
for tax allowable depreciation. So let's deal with that now. I'm going to put a line right below, right below tax. I'm going to call that TAD, tax allowable depreciation. Okay. The marketing team is going to understand that. Now I'm going to use a symbol for working W. Okay. And let me come over here to the right and do that working. I'm going to grab the years. I can use the years again. I'm going to copy those, paste them over here. I'm going to use a standard template when I'm doing the tax allowable depreciation. The first row is going to be written down value, WDV, essentially the same thing as net book value. Okay, marketing team's going to understand what those letters mean. Okay, now the beginning of year one, which is year zero, we purchase the asset for $2,000, round it off, $2 million. Okay, now the tax allowable depreciation is 25% reducing balance. You don't need to label the row in as much detail as I did. That's for our demo. If you just put the line TAD, that would be good enough. Okay. So the tax allowable depreciation at the end of year one will be 25%. So that's a 0 0.25 multiplied by the opening balance. The closing balance will then be the opening balance minus the depreciation charge for the year. Isn't that fun? Now I can just copy this formula because of the beauty of the relative cell addresses. I can just copy this over to year four. Okay, looking a little messy. Let me clean this up with a little light formatting. Okay, rounding off to one, to the one. And there we have the tax allowable depreciation to the end of the project. Now, the assumption in our ACCA FM questions is that the tax authorities will give us a balancing figure charge in the end of the year. Okay, so at the end of the project, we need to have depreciated the asset fully. So check this out. At the end of the project in year four, I'm going to get rid of that depreciation charge and I am going to get the sum of the depreciation in years one to three. That is equal to sum and those three figures in front of it. Guys, that's the total depreciation to the end of year three. Okay, now at the end of year four, the asset needs to be fully depreciated. So all I have to do now is take that opening balance of 2000. I'll just write it in. Okay, I'm just going to write it in. So that's going to be equal to 2000 minus that sum. Okay, and that, my friends, is the balancing figure for the remaining tax allowable depreciation that the authorities let us write off at the end of the project. Now, a common mistake is to bring this line into your NPV working, but we need to consider the effect of tax. We don't want that depreciation line. We need to make a new line, tax benefit. Okay, and the idea is this. That depreciation will reduce our tax charge, okay, by the tax rate. at 30% and we're still in arrears, okay? So I'm gonna come here to year two equals the tax allowable depreciation in year one multiplied by 0 0.3. That is a benefit, that's a positive number. I'm gonna drag that over to the year five. That's my tax allowable depreciation, guys. Last but not least, Come back over 
to our spreadsheet. Let's use the equal sign. Let's grab the tax allowable depreciation in year two. Let's hit return. Let's drag this guy over to here, grabbing that little box. There we have the tax allowable depreciation. Now to finish this off, let's add the initial investment, which was the negative 2000. Let's add a net cash flow line. And we have to change our, our formula a bit. We're going to open up the equal sign. We're going to use sum. But now we don't want to grab everything. We just want the taxable cash flow line down to the initial investment. We don't want to take inflated sales and costs. Again, that would be double counting. We'd be counting those twice. So there's my discount, my net cash flow line. Drag that across. Let's rebuild the NPV working one more time. So I'm coming down here to row 41 and we need the present value of the cash flows years one to five. So we'll use the same approach. We open up the NPV function, open up the bracket, the 12% nominal discount rate, comma, to change the argument, only years one to five. Close that out, okay? And we need the cash flow for year zero, which is right above us, equals this line in B39. And the NPV is then the difference. Four oh nine five. Don't forget the easiest mark in the whole question interpreting the figure. And if you're going to type out one or two sentences, NPV is positive. Therefore, we should accept the project because it will increase owner wealth. Okay, you guys can type that out. I've already typed it out several times. Guys, there you have it. Dealing with tax. Let's move on to our final complication, working capital. Okay, financial management warriors, this is the last complication that we're going to deal with, and that is working capital. And we're not gonna rewrite this whole spreadsheet again, so I am just gonna make space between depreciation, tax allowable depreciation, and initial investment for one more row. I'm going to cut that out of the way. I'm going to paste it lower. Okay. Now, since I'm here, let me fix the net cash flow line before I do anything else. I go up to the, to the formula bar and I've inserted a line, so let me bring the formula down one more row. So it's covering taxable cash flow to initial investment. I hit return. And now I'm going to drag the updated formula across. So when I add my working capital, everything will cascade and update nicely. So our final line here will be working capital. Let's use a working because it will be too much to pack into one line okay and i'll do the same thing i did before i'm going to grab these years to stay organized copy the years paste the years over here to the right now this will be the working capital working okay the first line i need is sales so let's label that line let's go to year one and let's set year one equal to my inflated sales in row 50 to the right, to the left, okay? There it is. And I can't copy paste that because of the relative cell addresses. It, the formula will break if I copy it because of the complicated formula there. So I'm just gonna refer to the result. Let me copy that over to year four. 
Guy's hard to read, so I'm going to grab this whole range of cells that I'm working with, and I'm going to also fix the formatting. Thousands, no zeros. Okay. And the question says that our working capital requirement is 10% of sales at the beginning of the year. Right, so before we start our project, we need a cash infusion to buy the first round of materials and to pay our workforce before we recover the cash from our customers. So the next line will be the 10% of sales beginning of year. And I just come to year zero. I'll set that equal to my sales multiplied by 0.1, 10%. And I drag that over to year three. So that is the working capital requirement at the beginning of each year. However, that is not the same thing as the cash flow. Okay, the cash flow will be the incremental about amount. Okay, at the beginning of year one, we need one three one. Okay. However, at the end of year one, we recover that 131. After we sell our goods, we recover that cash that we had um, injected at the beginning of the year. So we only need to reach into our pocket for the difference between year one and year two. That's the incremental amount. Okay, so watch what I do. Year zero, incremental amount will be equal to the, the figure above multiplied by negative one. There it is. So that's a, that's a cash outflow. Now, at the beginning of year two, which is the same thing as the end of year one, I need the difference between the 131 and the 282. So I'll just use the spreadsheet to help me using the relative cell addresses. I'll hit return. And this is going to be nice and quick. If I just drag this formula across, look at that, it's doing the incremental amount for me. And here, at the end of year three, the 544 is lower than the 791 from before, so I'm actually recovering cash, right? I recover 791, um, and I only have to reach into my pocket for, for 544, so that difference is a recovery. Then at the last, the end of the project, year four, I recover the final amount. Now, to check that our function is okay, that our formula is okay, I can do equals, sum. That line should be equal to zero, right? The net investment in working capital should be zero. It is, we did it correctly. Isn't that great? Okay, so that's my working. Final step, let's come back into our NPV spreadsheet. Let's find zero, working capital year zero. Let's use the equal sign. Let's refer to the, line, the figure in, in column J from our working. Let's hit return, carefully dragging that over, setting our formatting so we can read it. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have it with working capital. We, we fixed our cash flow line earlier. Everything is now correct. NPV is still positive. So we would write that same sentence there. NPV is positive. Therefore, we should accept the project because it will increase owner wealth. Again, the easiest mark in the question, okay? There you have it, guys, dealing with working capital, the final working here. Let's now convert our NPV analysis into real terms, okay? Let's show the NPV ignoring the effect of inflation, okay? So we've got to do two things. We've got to get rid of the inflation, and we've got to put the discount rate into real terms. So let's do those steps together. I'm not going to recalculate all of this. I'm just going to tweak my spreadsheet, okay? Let me just delete the inflation 
cells right here. It's going to break all of my formulas, but I'll just quickly fix them. So delete that. Let me grab all of this. I'm going to cut it with a control X. I'm going to paste it right below my costs. And look at that. All of my cells are broken. Not a problem. Let's quickly fix everything. So taxable cash flow will be equal to the sum, the two lines above. Okay. Tax is now fixed. Working capital will be We've got to fix the sales line over here in our working capital, so we've got to find the new sales without the inflation. And everything should get fixed when we drag that across, and it is, okay? Let's now just double check our net cash flow line, make sure that the formula isn't broken, and it's fine, okay? So there we have fixed the cash flows, now let's fix the discount rate. And earlier in this video, I showed you that the real multiplied by general inflation is equal to the nominal discount rate, okay? We know the nominal discount rate, so if we, we put a one in front of that, that's 1.1212. We know the general inflation rate, okay? That's 4.7%, so that's a 1.047, okay? And the real discount rate, okay, well, that's gonna be the 112 divided by the 1.05. So we do an equal sign there, nominal, divided by general inflation, and it's a six point something rounded to the seven, okay? Now, the final thing to do is to fix the discount rate in the NPV formula in cell B57. That still has the nominal 12%. We gotta get that 7% there. So let me just uh, go into the formula, okay? And it will be equal, okay, to the real, which is in cell E59, Minus one. We added one. We subtract one. Let's get rid of the. Let's get rid of that 0.12 business. We don't need that anymore. So take off that 0.12. So there it is. It's the 107 minus one. And there we have it, guys. The NPV in real terms. 3981. It's still positive. So our interpretation of the figure does not change. Guys, let's do a bonus requirement. Let's calculate the IRR of these real cash flows. Okay, they didn't ask for that in the question, but that is a common bolt-on requirement. So why not practice it? We have some cash flows. We have a spreadsheet, and it's really easy in the spreadsheet tool. I'm gonna do this. I am just going to make a label for the row. That's the IRR. I'm gonna come here, equal sign use the IRR function. I'm going to open up a bracket. Now I'm gonna grab all of the cash flows, including year zero. So I'm gonna start here at year zero with the initial investment and the working capital. I'm gonna grab this over here, drag it over to year five. And let's use some formatting so we can read that. 59.0% is the internal rate of return. That's the discount rate. That would give me zero NPV. So we can prove that that IRR is correct. I just come here to my present value working. If I swap out that discount rate with a 59, 0 0.59, and look at that, NPV is two, little rounding there, okay? But there you have it, the IRR function. Guys, there you have it, that's the IRR function. It will save a lot of time. Even if you don't see the IRR function being used in the model solutions in the back of your book, save time in the exam and use the function. Don't do it the old fashioned long way, okay? Friends, there you go. 
a big video on NPV. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and like the video. That will help me out. Guys, this is Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming FM exam.